The session that I'm going to do today is on uh, integrated all with the uh, Cloud Platform Integration Suite. My name is Harsh Jagadeesan. I have the privilege to lead the product management team for SAP's integration technologies. In this session, we're going to demystify what is the integration suite. We're going to look at motivations and challenges. We're going to look at um, the solution and the overview. And we're going to look at a demo as well. So what is the Cloud Platform Integration Suite? The Cloud Platform Integration Suite is SAP's enterprise integration suite for dealing with integration in hybrid and heterogeneous landscape. So it's completely on the cloud. It's a managed service available as part of our cloud platform, and it allows you to integrate it all, do all kind of integration, A to A, B to B, API-based integration, and we're going to look into that, right? And it's specifically tuned to run in hybrid and heterogeneous environments. I talked about three things that we'll do today. Look at motivation and challenges. Um, take a look at the solution. Talk about some integration scenarios and blueprints, solution diagrams, and uh, look at a demo. And finally, summarize the session. So we're going to look into motivation and integration challenges, new age integration challenges. Okay. So what are the integration challenges we face? And we're going to actually look through our lives, uh, go back like 10 years, and look at how our job as integration experts have evolved, right? And the kind of challenges that we have to deal with. I bet all your businesses are becoming digital businesses. In a, any industry, no matter which geography you are, you are trying to become a digital business. I was in a bank few months back, and uh, they were setting up Agile and Scrum teams, right? Hiring huge number of software engineers. Banks are becoming digital banks. If you're an equipment, traditional equipment manufacturer, um, you're moving from selling the equipment and selling the equipment as a service. If you are in healthcare, you're looking at digital healthcare, right? Uh, if you are in retail, you're, of course, looking at engaging your audience creating the right experience, brand experience across all channels. So the world is digital. And how do digital businesses win? Why do we like using uh, the apps that we like to use? Why do we like to shop in certain apps? Why do we go to Amazon? Why do we use Uber? It's because some of these offer us the best connected experience. So connected experience is critical. It's what does connected experience mean? It's about offering data and processes and being able to act on something in your context at the time of your choice. It's open 24 cross 7, 365 uh, days a year, and in the context, in the device of your choice, in a mobile device, in a website, in a kiosk, right? Through a bot, uh, through a robot, right? So all, all this is contextual for you as an end user, whether you're an employee, whether you're a customer, whether you're a partner. It's real time, and it's based on consumption at will. Consumption based on usage. Subscription economy is, is booming, right? How many subscriptions do we have? Starting from Netflix to Spotify to um, Apple Music to all of this is subscription based, right? We pay per subscription. We're not buying anything up front. We're not paying like a 12-month fee to Netflix. And consumption at will. When a consumer stops, doesn't like the experience, he stops, he switches. The cost of switching is really high. Even if you're in utilities, if you're in telecom, uh, you've been already dealing with uh, the switch costs, and this is happening across different businesses. It's becoming easy for customers to switch. This is the reality of new age digital businesses. Every one of you, every one of us, including me, we're getting there. Think about my life a few years back, uh, when we were building Shrinkwrap uh, software in SAP. We build the software, we ship it, it's available in service marketplace, and then it's your job to download it and do the implementation and deal with it while I go ahead and do my next release, right? But now we offer all this capability on the cloud. We are becoming a utility. We are operating it for you. We have to keep it up all the time, right? We sell this based on outcome. Every single API call you make, you pay for it. So even my job and including your jobs are all shifting and from that perspective, the challenge that all of us deal with, in order to create the simple connected experience, you have to deal with 
the complexity of your IT landscapes. IT landscapes are becoming more and more messy. Heterogeneous. How many of you here have only SAP systems in your landscapes? Even I cannot put my hand up. Right? I work for SAP. So the landscape is heterogeneous. There are multiple applications in your landscape. There is no one single database that's going to uh, hold, uh, um, not even HANA can hold one single source of truth across all your enterprise, right? So that's the whole point. Your landscape is getting heterogeneous. Your landscapes are getting hybrid. I bet all of you are evaluating how do I, can I uh, use public cloud, right? Your CIOs are thinking about this here. Chief digital officers are thinking about it, right? IT managers here are thinking about it. Architects, all of you are thinking about how do I deal with the hybrid cloud. There are going to be parts of your application portfolio on-prem. There are going to be certain other parts that are going to be on public clouds. Other parts could be on private clouds, could be regulated clouds, right? It's going to be distributed across many cloud environments. It could also be on the edge if you are a retailer or if you are a um, oil and gas company, you may have a lot of uh, stuff going on on the edge as well. The third thing is your application landscapes are becoming huge. So there is a study which says application portfolios of companies are growing 20% a year. The number of SaaS apps that you have is growing higher and higher. Sometimes from IT you don't even have control on some of these apps, right? So landscapes, the whole messy landscape is about heterogeneous, hybrid, and huge. We got to deal with these challenges, but still deliver. You have all this diversity, but you still have to deliver a connected experience. So how do you do that? <coughs> how can you deliver such a connected experience? The biggest thing, the determiner of your success to deliver this connected experience is, I mean, we talked about hybrid, multi-cloud devices, business networks, collaboration, right? So all this heterogeneity. The biggest determiner of your success to deliver these experiences, the connected digital experiences we talk about, to touch your customers where you are, uh, where they are, to touch your employees where they are, to work with your partners in real time, you have to deal with this heterogeneous, um, messy IT landscape, right? Integration will help you do that. When you connect one plus one, there are infinite possibilities, right? All your applications don't live in isolation. Your ERP doesn't live in isolation. They're part of a big application mesh, right? They are in an application network. They're all connected together to deliver business processes like end-to-end -end process, like lead to cash, uh, procure to pay, end-to-end -end processes like design to operate, hire to retire. All your applications have to be working well together. They have to be integrated together. So if you simplify integration, and I talk about both horizontal integration and vertical integration. What do I mean by that? Horizontally, all your applications, whether you own them or your partners own them, have to be integrated. And vertically, all your applications should be opened up through APIs, right? So you got to take care of these two dimensions. Integrate horizontally across everything, end-to-end -end process. Open up all of this as APIs so you can get new applications built on top, intelligence built on top and stuff like that. We see these connected experiences everywhere, farm to folk if you're an agribusiness, personalized products if you're a CPG company, right? Uh, even if you're a supermarket, you want to exactly know what people are using, give them recommendations, right? Patient experiences in healthcare, digital banks. When was the last time we went to a retail bank, to a branch? It's all through a mobile app, uh, connected products. Today I can actually open up an app and look at um, where my car is parked, right? Because my car has an API, it's opened it up, I can connect to it, um, and I'm sure a lot of you here can do that as well. So this is, um, and in terms of projects, integration projects itself have evolved, right? So it supports, integration projects now need to support real-time digital interactions. You should be able to integrate everything. You should be able to share data in real-time through APIs. It should support simplified connected experience. A lot of your integration projects need to support digital apps, digital initiatives that your company is doing. You should be able to orchestrate people process, build workflows for that. You should be able to open up for omni-channel access. You should be able to integrate SAP, non-SAP systems. We talked about this heterogeneous landscape. And last but not the least, it's also about process excellence. Integration delivers process excellence for you, right? End-to-end -end process that we talked about. By now, in TechEd, you should have figured out that on the intelligent enterprise, there are four big processes that we are talking about, right? Hire to retire the total workforce management, 
lead to cash, which is delivering your top line growth, your earnings, uh, procure to pay, which is allowing you to control your spend and helping you on your margins and profitability. And last but not the least, the whole design to operate, right? So these are the four processes and you should be able to achieve process excellence across these processes. In terms of business outcomes expected from integration projects, typically it was, hey, can you just connect these systems together? I have my ERP, I have Salesforce, or I have um, another uh, third-party payroll like ADP. Can you help me connect, right? I have success factors. Can you just create all this application network for the process, right? That's why we started. It started with batch. A lot of us did batch, manage file transfer for EDI, right? But now the nature of the projects are evolving. Some of your integration projects, if you just close your eyes and trace back like for the past 10 years, your integration projects, you are now doing things like digital ecosystem, business networks, right? What does that mean? You're offering APIs to your suppliers. You're complementing your traditional EDI B2B with APIs, right? Governments, governments are becoming e-governments. You as businesses need to send them e-documents, right, for staying compliant. So even the government interaction is becoming completely digital. App modernization efforts, as integration experts, you're supporting app modernization as well, right? Uh, you're supporting things like new customer experiences, opening up data. One of the biggest questions that all of us uh, working in the SAP integration space is how do I open up my SAP data for mobile apps, right? We, bought, we brought in an agency to build a new app experience based on iOS. These developers are asking me to give simple APIs on top of SAP, right? So how do we support that? Business model innovation. How can we support business model innovation like consume at will, consume new subscription-based offerings and all of that? The projects that we are doing is radiating from the center where we started off with pure A to A uh, connections to all these different dimensions, right? Um, and if you just take a step back and realize the projects that you're doing, you'll also see this evolution. What are the challenges in uh, you know, realizing these outcomes? Heterogeneous landscape, total cost of ownership is high because you have multiple integration tools. You need to do hybrid deployment because you want to take your integration tool, deploy it on-prem or deploy it on the cloud. Um, security is becoming critical because 10 years back, we did not share so much data outside, right? But now we start with sharing data outside for mobile apps, for partners. Um, and when we have to share this data outside, we need to think about integration security. How do you secure your assets and integration projects? This is an important component. If you're doing APIs, the OWASP top 10 security is important, right? Um, how do you deal with things like identity now? Because you, know, you may not have named users that you're sharing data to outside. So how do you deal with this kind of identity, uh, one on your internal realm and your external realm? How do you really spend, uh, simplify integration and save time for innovation? And let me take a simple example, right? Say sales order. You may have um, to share order API or order data to multiple parties. You may want to integrate the uh, order, a web shop integration for the order. You may want to share order statuses to somebody. The order needs to be sent over for fulfillment and so on and so forth, right? Your touch points to just the order or your touch points to just a business partner is so many. And one way to do that is if you expose that as a clean API, then your further uh, integration cost will reduce, right? So the first time you integrate, if you do just point-to-point -point integration, every time you're gonna spend the same kind of effort. But if you open it up as APIs, or if you use the APIs that we deliver, then your further integration cost will come down, and overall, if you do like four integration projects, your cost will come down by 50 to 60%, right? So that's also an important thought process about saving money for innovation scenarios. In SAP, before we go into the solution, I just want to wrap it up by talking about how we think about our integration strategy, right? Our integration strategy at SAP has four pillars. The first one, we try to make integration out of the box as much as possible between SAP to SAP, as well as between SAP to governments, as well as SAP to tier one integration applications that we see. What do I mean by that? You, we have pre-packaged integrations that we deliver. So if you go to api.sap.com, you will be able to see 1,200 plus business integrations that we deliver. These are not purely templates. They are also new. When we have new versions, we deliver those new versions as well. 
and uh, we deliver an integration platform, the Cloud Platform Integration Suite, which allows you to do all this integration. You can deploy those prepackaged integrations into your Cloud Platform Integration CPI tenant. You can configure the um, source system and target system, and then these systems talk, uh, start talking with each other. By the way, we also provide this for governments, right? So overall, 20 governments, every time there is a new uh, regulation that's coming up and you have to submit electronic documents, SAP provides you the broadest coverage out of the box to integrate with governments. Then we identified certain important third-party systems where there is integrations happening between SAP and these systems, right? For example, ERP, s hana and Salesforce. We built a prepackaged integration for that. There are 10 business integration scenarios between s hana and Salesforce. This is pre-delivered for you, right? We have this for ADP. Normally, there is a payroll integration with ADP. We have partners like Kronos and Vertex building these prepackaged integrations. So we want to make sure that integration comes out of the box as much as possible. It's not an easy job. It's a pretty audacious goal for us, but that's what we want to do to make it out of the box for you uh, as much as possible. The second one is open integrations. If there are integrations that we are not providing, we want to simplify you to build those integrations. We have this comprehensive platform to build integration, but we also opened up through APIs. There are 1,100 plus APIs available uh, across SAP, a lot of them are data APIs, which you can use to build integrations that are not yet out of the box. We provide 160 plus open connectors, which allow you to connect into a lot of third party systems like Salesforce, Workday, CRM systems, CRP systems. You can connect to that. So that's our open integration as a thought process, right? We also offer a PE Integrate program. It's called Partner Edge Integrate, where we have uh, hundreds of partners who are coming and building these prepackaged integrations as well. The third pillar is holistic integration. Integration patterns are evolving. I'll talk about the new integration patterns, right? Data integration, process integration, IoT integration, UI integration, uh, event-based integration, API-based integration, so on and so forth. So as integration architects, as integration experts, we need some guidance right, on when to use what, what are the right patterns to apply, what are the best practices. right? So we provide this based on a methodology called as integration solution advisory methodology. If you are an integration architect, if you are an integration expert, you need to have this at the back of your head. right? The whole integration solution advisory methodology. Some of the enterprise architects here, you've got to look it up. There is a session called INT102, run by my colleague Matthias Salgayer. I hope you had a chance to attend that, but please look it up, Me, uh, you know, attend that session. The last one is AI-driven integration. A lot of integration, there is still a lot of repetitive work in terms of mapping and all of that. And through our integration advisor, where we apply crowdsourcing and ML uh, techniques to provide these mapping recommendations for you. If you're doing B2B projects, the match of these mappings is very high, and uh, you can actually onboard trading partners in days rather than in weeks and months, right? So please take a look at this as well. These are the four pillars, out-of-the-box integration, open integration, holistic integration, and AI-driven integration. Now let's right jump in. We look, uh, let's uh, jump right in into the solution overview and the patterns, right? Um, but I hope this whole notion on the integration challenges resonates with you, right? You can see that you're seeing more and more uh, different kind of integration uh, problems thrown at you. SAP has the broadest coverage in terms of hybrid integration. This is our hybrid integration platform picture, right? Uh, so if you are setting up a HIP strategy, we allow you a toolkit from where you could pick up everything that you need to do your hybrid integration. So it starts with our process integration orchestration solution. It, it complements, you have Cloud Connector, which can be installed on-prem or in your private cloud environments, which allows you to connect between the cloud and on-premise. Or we have uh, comprehensive data integration tools, all centered around the SAP Data Hub, uh, ETL tools, data pipelining tools that are available for you. We have an embedded integration framework um, AIF, Application Integration Framework, embedded into ABAP, embedded into s hana ERP. Um, and the value of this is tremendous, right? 
a lot of integrations fail because there is missing master data. Uh, your business users are not able to go fix these integrations or you know retry some of these integrations. AF takes that problem away for you, um, and it works closely with our other integration tools in the tool set. On the cloud, if you're doing agile integrations, if you're thinking about complementing, you have PIPO or you have web methods or some other integration solutions, right? And you want to go for agile integrations, cloud integrations. If you've not done it, you should turn on Cloud Platform Integration Suite. This is our enterprise iPaaS on the cloud. It consists of Cloud Integration CPI, which allows you to do A to A, B to B, as well as build APIs, right, in a low code way. It has the integration advisor, which allows you to manage your integration interfaces, all schemas, and get mapping proposals which can be deployed in PI or deployed in CPI. We have data intelligence. We launched uh, data intelligence in Tech at Vegas, which allows you to do data pipelining, data integration tasks, and then bring data for machine learning as well. Data intelligence is our data hub, as well as our machine learning foundation coming together on the cloud, available in Cloud Platform Enterprise Agreement for consumption-based access. We have open connectors. This is where we have the 160 plus connectors, which allow you to connect to all kinds of third party, we take a one-to-many integration approach or a hub-based integration approach. I'm going to apply, you know, explain that in a bit. And last but not the least, when you're doing this vertical integration exposing APIs, we have API management that allows you to manage the complete life cycle of your APIs. We have enterprise messaging that allows you to manage your topics, queues, even uh, event-driven messaging, get IoT events, um, expose event APIs like MQTT, MQP, webhooks, uh, for your customers, right? So it's pretty comprehensive, and uh, you can simply get started um, with this. You can go to cloudplatform.sap.com and or sap.com slash integration hyphen suite. You can get started with this. Now we're going to zoom in, right? This whole picture is presented in Int 100 by my colleague Uda Palsa. And uh, if you have questions on PO roadmap, how do I plan this? What should be my roadmap towards a hybrid integration? Um, Udo will explain this. There is also a roadmap session, 803, where you can get more information. In this session, I'm going to zoom in into the Cloud Platform Integration Suite. Right? This is our enterprise iPaaS. And these are the eight scenarios that we support, the eight integration scenarios. Starting from traditional A to A, around processes like hire to retire, lead to cash, design to operate. Moving from there, when I say lead to cash, it could be SAP, non-SAP systems. All these processes could be SAP and non-SAP. The second one is B2B, traditional EDI-based B2B, B2G, e-government integrations. The third one is omnichannel access with APIs, the vertical integration that I talked about, being able to expose APIs at will. The fourth one is digital process and apps. You can build process through workflows. You can do task automation with RPA, right? So if there is an RPA conversation going in your companies, you should definitely look, look at the RPA solution that we have. Event-driven integration, IoT events, sense and response scenarios, sensing something, um, identifying a business event and taking an action by calling CPI or calling an API, right? Um, digital integration hub, I will talk about this pattern in a moment, but we had a session on Digital Integration Hub. Bacardi did a session on Digital Integration Hub yesterday, but I will also talk about the pattern in this slot. Uh, then you have data integration processing, data pipelines, and last but not the least, getting data, uh, in integrated data, and applying machine learning to get data insights and intelligence. Right? So these are the eight scenarios or customer jobs to be done that we support. Now let's look at, deep dive into each of these scenarios, right? And then we look at solution architecture on how we do this. So these are some of the popular out-of-the-box integrations and customer integrations we see, right? Lead to cash, hire to retire, source to pay, issue to resolution, right? Um, based on what we see in our customers, based on our telemetry, we could say these are some of the things, scenarios that you're doing. So it's not just SAP. Right? There is a huge misconception that, hey, this is only for SAP. That's not true, uh, because this is for heterogeneous and hybrid landscapes. We want to solve integration problems. We don't want to necessarily solve just SAP to SAP integration. I talked about the out-of-the-box integration, right? And how is this different from a connector? So I get asked this question, hey, I have an adapter. I have a connector to the system. 
and you talk about out-of-the-box integration, what's the difference? Connector is purely simplifying technical connectivity to a system like Salesforce or technical connectivity to a system like Cooper or to Marketo, right? Then you may have recipes or samples which explain some sort of, uh, you know, here is how you could connect these two systems. But that is not giving you an integration outcome. We go one step further and we've created out-of-the-box integration packages which connect the left-hand system, right-hand system, do all the mapping, make it all available for you. Whenever there is a new version, we ship a new version so you know when the version comes and you can choose to deploy it overnight or you can take a decision on when you want to deploy that new version and stuff like that. So we want to go one step further towards integration outcomes. And we've seen that by taking this approach, there is close to four to five X savings in terms of costs, in terms of time, and a 10X acceleration in terms of costs, right? So this is some um, you know, exercise that we did looking at S4HANA and Salesforce integration, S4HANA Kronos and success factors integration. How many of you here are doing some Salesforce, S4HANA, ERP integrations, right? So we provide this out of the box, so you, could, you don't need to do this, do all the hard work. I just want to talk about, our, as a concept, one of the things that we're trying to do is invert the pyramid of integration. Try to provide close to 60 to 70% of your integrations out of the box, as much as possible, as we learn based on your scenarios. Provide templates for the rest 20%. So you could use those templates and extend, and you have to do only 10%, right? This is a lofty ambition, but this is what we want to do, to make your integrations out of the box as much as possible. So let's take a concrete scenario. If you are doing a HR integration project, some of the scenarios you'll do is success factors, ERP, ECC integration. Then you may be doing success factors, ADP integration, AM, ADP Global View integration in Germany or in US, right? So all this should come out of the box. Then you may have a plant in Slovenia, right, where you're using CloudPay as a local payroll vendor, and we try to provide a third-party blueprint for a third-party integ payroll integration. So you're able to use that and build integration into CloudPay, API-based integration into CloudPay, and at least that brings down cost of integration slightly further because we provide a blueprint for third-party CRM, third-party third, third uh, payroll provider and all of that. But now you have a legacy clock-in and clock-out system in your plant. For that, you have to build an integration, and we provide all the tools that are needed to connect into these third-party systems as well. So we want to try to invert the pyramid, and that's the direction for us. How do we do third-party integration? You have all your SAP systems. You have third-party systems. We group the third-party system as hubs. We have a CRM hub, an e-commerce hub, a storage hub, a help desk hub, um, and all these hubs have harmonized APIs. So we try to build one CRM API. So you just integrate into that API, and then we are able to do the mapping into multiple CRM systems. So Open Connectors is our solution, our service that allows you to do that. It provides you a harmonized API. And then using CPI and the Open Connector adapter, you can connect in and do your uh, mappings, right? And that's how you do the third-party integration. Open Connectors provides you APIs and events as well. And uh, so what are the hubs available? Where could, I, where, where could you integrate with? We provide hubs for storage, CRM, finance, marketing, help desk, ERP, social, messaging, e-signature, collaboration, HCM, payments, conferencing, field services, expenses, e-commerce. So anything that you want to do, you will definitely find it here, right? If you don't find it here, then we also offer you tooling to easily integrate to these systems. So we've tried to harmonize uh, APIs for each of these hub. It's a hub and spoke model. You integrate into the hub, and then you're able to integrate into multiple systems. That's about end-to-end -end A to A integration across processes. The second scenario that we talked about is B2B and B2G. In B2B, we support traditional B2B with EDI. We also support new age B2B with APIs. For e-government, we talked about governments becoming e-governments, right? We, these are the integration, out-of-the-box integration that we provide. So if you're here in Spain, the whole EVAD uh, integration, if you're in Germany, the Elster integration, if you're in Australia, the whole single-touch payroll integration, right? Payroll e-filing for the UK, if you're in India, it's GST. If you're in the Latin America, 
all the different integrations that you want to do for electronic invoicing, and uh, if you're in the US, the tax integration, which is provided by a partner, Vertex. So all of this is free coming out of the box. If you have integration suite, you can deploy these packages uh, directly there for all your e-government integrations, right? And this keeps growing. We added South Korea now, right? We add a couple of more countries. As and when we see new, re new uh, regulations coming in, we add these integrations. The third scenario is omnichannel access with APIs, right? As you know, in 2016, we started our own internal API program. I had the good fortune of being there at the start. Um, we have our global API program. We have an API makers community internally where we engage with different uh, API developers across SAP. LOBs, we have the API business hub, right, where all the APIs come out. And additionally, it's not just APIs, we also provide prepackaged integration. So that's our API program. That's how you see it in API business hub coming. So these are all the SAP solutions, and every new SAP solution needs to put their APIs and integrations out there in the api.sap.com. This is our API business hub. It provides one common API catalog. It has an API sandbox, it pro uh, provides prepackaged accelerators like integration, and then it provides easy consumption of these APIs through code generation and stuff, right? So I'm gonna quickly show you a demo of the API Business Hub. Have you all seen the API Business Hub? All right. So you can go to api.sap.com, it's free. You can do it on your mobile device, on your iPads. Um, and uh, you can see all SAP APIs that are available here. So let's take a look at S4 HANA Cloud. So S4 HANA Cloud has 303 APIs that are available now. And say I want to look at sales order. So I have sales order API, which is an OData based API. All the APIs are exposed in a common documentation format, open API specification. We are also, SAP is also on the board of this open API specification as well as OData. We drive these efforts. Um, and I want to get sales orders, right? I can go simply try out this API. I need to have an SCN ID. All of us have it here, right? Or you can simply sign it up in a couple of minutes. And then I try out this API. I get a response. I didn't have an S4 HANA Cloud system, right? But we provide you an API sandbox. All of us are getting impatient these days. So you can just go try it out on the sandbox, learn about this API, start working with it, and once you know how to work with the API, you can go and configure your own environment. You don't have to wait for someone to provision the sandbox, right? So we provide the sandbox for you, and if you have your own environment, you can bring your own as for HANA Cloud or any of the SAP solutions, and then you can make calls against those systems as well. So that's what the API Business Hub allows you to do. Once you're able to do the API call, we provide you code snippets in JavaScript, Java, Swift, Curl, UI5, ABAP, uh, SAP Cloud Platform, ABAP, Steampunk, right? And you can use this code snippet to make calls to this API. Um, you can actually go in and um, download an SDK. And in CPI, you can find this API, click a button, and from that API, generate an iFlow, right? So that's the kind of tooling that we have established across these solutions, right? So I talked about APIs. We also slowly start putting in business events, right? So you see the business events, business partner events, business partner change created um, are slowly, the events are coming into the API hub, right? The third thing is integrations. I talked about these out of the box integrations, right? Um, and let's take the example that I told you. Let's take Salesforce. I'm looking at the Salesforce integration package, right? As for HANA Cloud integration with Salesforce. Uh, some of you raised your hand saying you did Salesforce integration. These are the 10 business integrations for Salesforce. Bupa, account, two-way connection between these two systems, right? So I want to get an account and replicate it on as for HANA from Salesforce. I have an integration that we have developed. So you see this integration, it's available to you. You can see this from your CPI tenant and then copy it over and deploy it. And these two systems will start talking with each other, right? That's the idea of uh, the integration flows as well. So you saw APIs, you saw events, you saw integration, but then an in integration semantics is critical, right? And SAP owns a lot of business semantics in the enterprise 
and we captured the semantics as CDS views, right? So we provided all CDS views as well, which has semantics for you, and that's, um, that's how we want to expose the semantics as well. And the CDS views are available, um, all the semantics is available in our, in, in our integration advisor, and that's how it can simplify integration for you. So that's the API Business Hub. You should bookmark it, and highly recommend that. Um, let's go into, if you're doing your own API, so API development, we offer a full API lifecycle uh, platform. Um, we talk about this in INT 203. There's a repeat of the session today. I will do this in the afternoon, 12.15. So please join me there if you're thinking about APIs, right? Um, there is, by the way, on the API Business Hub, some of you raised your hand saying you use it. We run a usability session. We want to improve the user experience constantly of this. And you can go down, register for the usability session, give your feedback, right, um, on a quick gift, and also influence the product. So if you have the time today, please take the time and register in our usability session. The next pattern we talked about is Digital Integration Hub. So let me actually bring up the picture very quickly. The idea of Digital Integration Hub is to ensure that all this disparate data from multiple systems, on an API call, you don't want to go and get all this data, but you want to already stage it and make it available um, on an in-memory data grid, like HANA, right? Uh, all your material, all your stock information, everything that you want to share with everybody, you put it onto HANA. And when the API call hits, one of your digital consumers are asking for this, you deliver it from the in-memory cache without having to hit the backend, right? And whenever there is a write request for it, you do a deferred write through events and CPI in the backend. For the academically inclined or someone who's looking at patterns, this is the CQRS pattern, right? You could look that up. And we're seeing this as a common evolving pattern. And why are people doing this? For two reasons. For digital integrations and UX integrations, the response time is very critical. This allows you to save the response time. That's one. Uh, the second thing is, in digital interactions, you want to learn how people are accessing your data. For example, if you're a retailer and if you're providing access to your product catalog, which is access from omni-channel, from your phone to your website to your kiosk, you want to know how many people added products from their mobile experience into the shopping cart. You want to know whether they really checked it out on the mobile device or whether they're actually adding it in the mobile device on the shopping cart and then going for a website and checking out from there. You want to do all those user journey analytics, right? So when you, once you put it on HANA, you can get that analytics as well. You can actually learn how customers are interacting with your data. We see a lot of customers do this. I, I'm just flashing some of the uh, Innovation Award winner customers. Um, and yesterday, Bacardi added into this list where they came on stage and explained how they did uh, the digital integration uh, hub as a pattern, right? Our customers call this in multiple ways, data access layer, caching, uh, agility layer, and all of that. Gartner is calling this digital integration hub, so I'm just simply using that terminology here. Okay, so we saw some of these integration challenges that you're solving, how you could uh, you know, solve that through the blueprint, uh, through some of the arch solution architectures. What I tried to do, it's not an easy exercise. As and when these patterns evolve, I tried to capture this all in one slide, okay? And I'm still trying to improve it. If you have feedback, I'm happy to take that. Um, you have this heterogeneous backends, and in this blueprint, I'm gonna capture all the different integration patterns, right? We have open connectors that allow you to connect into third-party systems, expose events and APIs. We have CPI, cloud integration, that allows you to do A to A and B to B. Also allows you to create new APIs, right? These are the integration patterns. You also use CPI open connectors for all this third-party integration. Then you have digital interactions, digital integrations that you have to support, the vertical integration that I talked about, right? There we have this concept called as API graph, API fabric, uh, which is managed in API management. There you could expose APIs from your gateway, from your PI systems. You could build new APIs in CPI in a low-code way and expose it. 
You can actually use microservices architecture to build your APIs. You can use a cloud SDK to connect into SAP systems. You can directly connect or you can use the digital integration hub as a pattern and use an in-memory data grid to stage your data, SAP uh, smart data integration, and deliver it from there. So you support request response patterns with this. If you want to support uh, event-based patterns, webhooks, MQTT, MQP, you can also support that. We have enterprise messaging that allows you to support that, right? Enterprise messaging, by the way, also can support you to decouple A2A integration in an event-driven fashion. And then you have function as a service, which can also, based on an event, uh, take an action. So this is one slide to capture all the different integration patterns that we see. And uh, now I want to get into a demo, uh, show you very quickly. How many of you watched the keynote? And did you, good, did you see the integration suite pitch by Jurgen? Did you see the customer 360 demo? Do you remember it? Okay, I'm gonna remind you. So the scenario that we are looking at here, the scenario that we are looking here is a heterogeneous landscape. We have S for HANA, where materials, products, price, sales order, the whole digital core. The customer is using Salesforce for customers' opportunities, and then ServiceNow for ticketing. And now, what is the first challenge that we have to do when we have such a landscape? For all our business processes to work, we have to connect these systems first, the whole horizontal connectivity, right? Between S for HANA and Salesforce and ServiceNow, right? You have to be able to share and all the information should pass in real time between these systems. That's the first application to application challenge, right? That's the whole horizontal integration that I talk about. The second one is we have to open up data from these systems so that it can be used by chatbots, it can be used by Fury apps, analytics cloud, mobile apps, right? Um, can be used by our suppliers, uh, partners, digital ecosystems, all of that. So we have the horizontal layer of integration and then vertically opening up through APIs, right? These are the integration challenges we solve here. We use Cloud Platform Integration, CPI, and we have prepackaged integration between S4 HANA, Salesforce, right? Uh, with ServiceNow, we have open connectors, so you could build your own integration. We don't yet have a prepackaged integration for ServiceNow. Uh, then we have uh, the API management layer where you can build your own API graph, API fabric, to expose your APIs from a vertical perspective. That's the scenario that we are trying to solve. And what is the goal? You want to support a customer 360 view because customer data is spread across hybrid heterogeneous landscapes, right? S4 HANA is on-prem. Uh, you have other things on the cloud. So the first step is going into CPI. I'm searching for Salesforce. And uh, we find the out-of-the-box integration package, right? We copy it over into our tenant. This is the standard way in which you consume all our out-of-the-box integration. Application to application or business to government, all these integrations is consumed in this standard way. You go search for the prepackaged integration, you copy it over into your tenant, and then you just configure it and deploy it, right? So I go here, I look at all the different integration flows that are there. I just pick one integration flow for this example, right? And uh, we are going in and configuring this. This is the integration flow. We have delivered it, right, out of the box. So you go in here, and then you configure it, and then you deploy it. This is deployed. Now, these systems are talking with each other. Now, we wanted to create a customer 360-degree view, right? We wanted to integrate into all these systems, expose data for third party. So here you see the accounts API, the incident API, all of this available here, and we build the accounts API. So open connectors allows us to open up the whole uh, Salesforce where our account information is, and from CPI, through open connectors, we are connecting in and creating an OData service in this case, right? And I'll explain in a moment what's the advantage of OData. So this is built uh, in CPI and using open connectors, right? And this is an API that's getting built. All the mappings, are also done here in a simple intuitive low-code mapping tool. You have the incident API again, which is actually connecting into ServiceNow and getting you this uh, calling ServiceNow and getting you an OData API. And again, there is a simple transformation between ServiceNow and, to, and into our common format, which is also done in a low-code way. So once you do this, S4 HANA, by the way, already offers a OData API, right? So the account information, the stock information, material information comes in OData. 
from Salesforce, we have created our data. From ServiceNow, we created our data, right? Um, you also see um, all of this created. Once you have these APIs created, the next thing that you do, by the way, how do you connect to this open, um, you know, third-party applications? You use open connectors. You see the uh, see all the connectors here. I talked about these different hubs. Now we search for the CRM hub, right? In the CRM hub, you see all the different CRM applications. We wanted Salesforce Cloud. We looked at Salesforce. We established a connectivity into Salesforce, right? By the way, I could also do event configuration, enable events, and really look at all the different events coming from the Salesforce system, uh, and do event-based integration as well. We've chosen OAuth, and then there is a OAuth handshake happening with Salesforce. As I, as I establish connectivity, I log into Salesforce and say, please allow access. <laughs> and once the access is available, uh, all the data is available in open connectors where I can call an API and test it out. This API format that you see here is common for all CRM systems, right? Whether you use Salesforce or NetSuite or you're using uh, um, HubSpot, doesn't matter. So there is an API harmonization done already in one step, right? So if you're doing an acquisition, you have another CRM system, it's very easy to integrate into that. So we get all the all these APIs, and this is exactly the API that's used through an open connector adapter in CPI to connect in, right? So we also now connect into help desk systems, which is ServiceNow, Jira, ServiceNow, Zendesk. So we connected into ServiceNow through this, right? There is social, there is all the different hubs that I talked about that you should definitely uh, explore. All this, by the way, is available on trial. You can do all of this in our trial environments. Now I go into API management. I build the APIs in a low-code approach through CPI. And from API management, I'm assembling all these five APIs that we have in API management. I'm adding security policies, traffic management policies, right? I can use API management to get analytics of how people are using it. And all these APIs are now available, right? So customer API, incident API, opportunity API, sales order API directly coming from S4HANA, because here I didn't have to do any protocol transformation. It was directly available as OData, and then we are simply bringing that out here, right? You have the customer API, and this is going down into CPI, where I've built the uh, transformation and the same with the incident API as well. So now we have all the APIs in one place. We've established policies. What's the advantage of OData? OData brings in the whole uh, schema definition of your uh, objects, right? It can do pagination, all of this out of the box. And because we have OData, think about where we can deliver this. This is a Fury app. Using Fury Elements, you could simply um, you know, build this. And this is a 360-degree app built in very short time. Accounts, opportunities coming in, sales order coming in from uh, S4HANA system, right? Um, uh, the incidents coming in from ServiceNow. So all of this is coming from different systems, but available through APIs in one standard way. And this API layer allows us to also do further integrations on top, right? So you see all this data coming in, open incidents coming in from different systems. And because we have OData again, we could also go in and use this OData to build dashboards, all in real time. By the way, I'm not staging anything in a data lake or whatever, right? So from Analytics Cloud, Analytics Cloud can work with OData, and from Analytics Cloud, we built a dashboard very simply using the OData sources. It's in real time. You don't need to push data into a data lake to build anything. It's direct connectivity, and you can actually see all this information. There is a chat bot that you could build using our conversational AI bot builder. And the chat bot is actually helping you, the chat service team, make calls and get inputs on customer. It allows you to get inputs on customer open tickets, right? You see customer ID, and you see uh, this is the customer detail. You can actually ask the chatbot in the context, right? In natural language processing, um, give me a open tickets, and you can look at all the open tickets. Can be integrated into Alexa and other environments as well. So that's the whole idea. So what did we really look at here? Let's do a wrap on the on the demo. 
The problem that we wanted to solve, we have a heterogeneous landscape, we wanted to integrate it. So s hana Salesforce service now, we showed integration, we showed out of the box integration in some cases. Then we showed how we could open up these systems through APIs. We use CPI to do protocol transformation between plain REST, created our data services, put all this in one common access way, like api.mycompany.com slash orders, api.mycompany.com slash customers. We created that kind of API graph, API fabric out there, and we exposed it for our developers to build apps, analytics, to our business analysts to uh, you know, do analytics, and also to build conversational AI on top. So that's what our integration suite allows you to do. Work in heterogeneous landscapes, connect this, and also open it up through APIs. So in summary, as integration experts, we have a very important job because integration is the foundation. If you're not doing integration well, the cost of app development can zoom up. You cannot do, you cannot apply intelligence. You cannot do business process innovation. This is the foundation, right? So we have a really critical job as integration specialists. The SAP Cloud Platform Integration Suite allows you to get trusted and easy access to SAP easy access to third-party systems, applications, as well as easy access to third-party data source, like cloud stores, like IoT, unstructured data, databases, right? And it allows you to open up all of this as APIs, as events, as integrations, as pipelines, for intelligent BPM projects, for LOB extensions, apps, innovations that you're building for digital workplaces, as well as for applying machine learning and intelligence on top. So that's the idea, and uh, with that, I want to wrap the session. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to be available right here after the session if you have questions, um, and enjoy the rest of your ticket.